Uh, zombies. These walking undead cliches have crawled right out of the graves and right into our hearts. No matter who you ask, everybody knows these famous walking dead, either from the show of the same name or from the ever so present run-ins with these shambling corpses in popular games. What is up LHS? It's Zach, one of your soda devils, coming to you with one of my personal favorites, Dying Light. Dying Light, in and of itself, is a zombie apocalypse slash horror game that's set in the infected city of Haran, a newly independent country that just broke away from British rule and that of which has a deadly virus turning people into ravenous monstrosities. Your overall main goal is to find a local gang member turned raider boss that goes by the name of Arias. In the beginning of the game, you can find yourself being transported to the island via aircraft and dropped to the island, where upon arrival, Rias's lackeys are waiting for you. Long story short, you have to fire your personal sidearm to escape the perilous situation, only for a viral to see you and ouch. That's gonna hurt in the morning. Other than the one bite in your arm, you escape relatively safe and sound. Well, as safe and sound as being infected sounds. Just be glad you didn't end up like the other guy rescuing you. Can a band-aid fix it? No? Uh, what about duct tape? Neither? Just be glad you got an infected hickey from the locals. After going through the intro and completing some quests, you finally get free reign of the game. With the world waiting for you to explore it and many new characters dying to see you, with some literally dying, it's easy to get caught up in the rush of adventure. So before you go and make the same mistake that I did when I figured out that I couldn't eat five hot chili peppers at one time, here are some things you need to know about the game. Number one, keep an eye on your experience bars. In the game Dying Light, you have two main experience bars at the top of your screen. One for parkour and another one for combat. These two skills only level up the more you use them. So if you want to level up your parkour per se, you need to vault over objects, climb into high buildings, and jump over rooftops. And generally be one of those YouTubers that do parkour. Michael. Parkour! Parkour! The more you run, the more points you'll gain. This is the same with combat. If you want to get better with weapons and firearms, you need to always engage in combat often. But it's always a good idea to have a backup plan. Number 2. The Day-Night Cycle Dying Light strives to be as realistic as it can get. Well, most of the time anyways. I mean, zombies. Come on, right? Right? Anyways, this game includes a day-night cycle, causing for some fast-paced action when traveling alone. You see, when it becomes nighttime, many of Haran's denizens will come out of hiding, causing them to chase you when you get spotted. If you want to live through the night, do not, I repeat, do not try to take them on. These predator-like shells of the human race are as deadly as they are fast, so look for safe zones or run like crazy until dawn. Get it? Until dawn? No? No? Okay. Number 3. Weapons and Modifications Haran is strewn with weapons, many of which are fairly easy to find and could probably scrap in later use, but some are extremely valuable and can be used effectively for an extensive amount of time. To further push the boundaries of awesomeness to some of these weapons, you can add different types of damage to your weapons. Some of these include some basic impact or bleeding damage by adding weights or nails, or to some downright awesome like fire or electrical damage. You haven't lived until you've seen a zombie get knocked back like he was hit by a train while on fire. And that's what you get for biting my arm. And my leg and my neck. That's what you just get for biting me. Number four, utilities. Lastly, we save the survivor's best friend for last, the utilities. These simple and not so simple craftables can be found in your blueprints menu and should be crafted if you want to survive the Haran virus. These small utilities can be a med kit, a bomb, or even firecrackers. And trust me, firecrackers are your friend. Each one is quite unique in their own, but the firecrackers are the only noise-making device that doesn't attract virals. So tossing these small 4th of July rolls on the ground can be the difference between life and death. These bundles of loud joy can attract zombies into a particular spot until it runs out of snap, crackle, and pop, in which case they'll disperse. This is very helpful in places where you're getting swarmed, or if you just want to mess around with some bandits. With all my points out of the way, it's time for the biggest question in game review. Should you play it? Yes. Not only does this game feature my favorite mythical world ending creatures, it also blends together two games that I love, Dead Island and Mirror's Edge, into one complete zombie slaying package. Next, this game has a really fun and intuitive movement system that can also be used as a combat strategy in late game, making yourself like Bruce Lee in Return of the Dragon, if Bruce Lee was an agent in a city full of zombies, and if he ran away from almost everything. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one in the movies. Finally, Dying Light also has a good and compelling story, one with more twists and turns in the Grand Canyon on steroids. It also comes with a multiplayer game mode so you can complete objectives with your friends. Or not. It's survival of the fist, after all. And to all of you people asking what it plays on, you'll be happy to know that Dying Light is available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. It does include DLCs that can be bought either online or by grabbing the Enhanced Edition, however, but it's not necessary to the main game if you have it or not. So yeah, 
If it were up to me to give this game a rating out of 10, I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. Not only does this game have a fun and exciting world to play in, it's also full of mystery and danger. The reason it didn't get the full 10 out of 10, however, is because some of the content had to be bought in order to get the full experience. But in the end, you really didn't need it, now didn't you? Hey, I never said games were cheap now, didn't I? Like the video? Want more videos by me? Come on down to the BDN room and leave a suggestion for what game I should review next. And as always, be cool, stay in school, and stay tuned for your Blue Devil news.